Alright guys, Touch Cry back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. I'm with an incredible stage 5 major in the books. One of the big storylines is Atlanta Faze not making the grand finals, not winning the entire tournament, not even coming top 4 or top 6, but instead placing top 8. What is going on this past weekend? Did the fans being back to land actually make a difference here? Are they feeling the pressure? Lots of questions to be raised right now about Atlanta Faze. Very much intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I greatly appreciate it. I really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, I thought this is kind of funny right from um, well, credit to the intel they're selling this t-shirt at the venue toronto ultra is for some reason missing so out of all these teams phase of dallas florida london los angeles grillis los angeles sees rocker subliners object paris and surge toronto ultra despite this being a nice little purple shirt is um not even present right here and as great as a reply it's almost like they knew that um well that the series would end in the grand funnels the way it did but if toronto would have managed to win it'd be kind of incredible that this t-shirt didn't even have the winners of the event on it but um that kind of is what it is crimson says the following yesterday after their loss to optic Chicago, GG's Optic, Rocker and Los Angeles Thieves. Teamwork, discipline and listening was non-existent this past weekend. All good. Formula and I were absolutely going rogue in the smoke area right now behind the scenes, which um, of course a bit of drama between those two most certainly these last several weeks. But yeah, they lost to Optic yesterday. They've um, obviously got some work to do right before the World Championship, but there is one team, if, you, if there is one team that you'd expect to turn things around and do pretty well at, it's potentially the Dallas Empire, right? They won it last year. They're now looking to do the same thing again. Teamwork, discipline, listening, non-existent. Thought that was kind of interesting for Crim6 to say certainly some, some room for maneuver and for improvement on the Dallas Empire side and well it's kind of incredible to think about the two well the, well, the two grand finalists right from the previous major none of them even made top three this time around phase dropped out and it's Dallas Empire that end up coming top four so um you know how things change in like a month and a little bit right and going into the world championship things are very very interesting indeed this is one of the more crazy things we've seen this entire season Atlanta phase the reigning champions they've made every single grand final so far this season they won stage one they came um, well, they came second in stage two to ultra online then they won stage three, they won stage four back on LAN, and now we are at level LAN with fans in stage five, and things are very different indeed. Of course, things changed, and a phase didn't look um, quite so solid as they did even online these last several weeks, right? When they lost to Optic, for example, game five round 11, that was an interesting uh, situation that occurred, thinking, okay, maybe phase aren't quite where they were before, dominating every single team, barely losing a series. But um, the fact that they come into this weekend and they get effectively double first rounded is something which is um, out of the realms of possibility, I think, for most people's expectations. We'll talk about that a bit more in a second. I thought this is funny actually given a well, Jacob comes right here to look at John. John's face is just kind of funny right here. Sorry, John. Looks like I'm going to have to bench you before, champs. Who knows um, if Los Angeles sees will decide to do anything, but probably not. They did look pretty good this past weekend. I think with this team, they can make something happen on LAN, and um, there's just so many questions what happens next season, right? And this roster mania is going to be absolutely insane. The subscribe button, the big red button is your best friend to make sure we do not miss anything, right? But yes, online Call of Duty, is it even real as Octane says? a straight up fake card. I'm absolutely begging you to prove me that it's not because Seattle Surge, what a week end of Call of Duty that they had and of course they were the ones to knock out Atlanta phase in the end this is pretty ridiculous they ended the season at 11 and 1 in hard points on land that being Seattle Surge I mean look at this right they go into groups they lose five in a row then since the last game of groups where they beat where they beat Los Angeles Grillers who were terrible at hard points they win every single hard point they played in the major which is um remarkable stuff including as you can see two wins against phase in a well not exactly incredibly comfortable fashion but it wasn't particularly close down to the end especially that game on Moscow and phase of course bow to the tournament in remarkable fashion. So, this is really where the questions to arise. Every previous event, there, ha there either hasn't been fans. So look, at the end of the day, it's not like these guys are, um, are new to a LAN environment. Arsides, Simp, and Abizi all won the World Championship on LAN back in 2019. But on that team, they're pristinely there, they're placed there right a kind of leadership figure. And that was the thing. Arsides was brought into this squad to say, look, last season in Modern Warfare, the team was so good, we made a load of grand finals, but we didn't have the ice when it mattered. We didn't clutch up. We got too kind of uh, frantic and antsy, and um, yeah, things kind of fell apart in the grand finals. They had a pretty poor record in grand finals last year. The idea was Arsties comes in and he knows these guys. He's won championships with them before, won the world championship with them before, as I said on E United a couple of years ago. And um, that's going to mean that when they do get in these pressure series, they're not going to struggle and they're going to get over the line. And we saw that pretty much this entire season so far. But this major, with I suppose the pressure was on greater than it was before. Not only was the pressure on phase to prove, like, look, you've been the dominant team this entire season. The pressure's on you to win every single event. Even losing a single series if your phase will have questions being raised, and especially with the world championship 
ownership on the horizon, being the dominant team the entire season, the pressure is very much on Atlanta Vase. And well, Scrim6 talked about this just a few days ago, right? That he was like, look, the pressure's on them. I'd be pretty scared if I were Atlanta Vase that, um, yeah, they, they're going to falter and fall short somehow. And guess what happens this weekend with the pressure certainly on? And of course, the performances and form of teams vary over time. But just remarkable to see, like, stage one major, they come first. Stage two major, they come second. Stage three major in first. Stage four major in first. And then the stage five major top eight. They don't even win a series this past weekend. And as I say, look, these guys are world champions on land. It's not like they're onliners per se, but uh, maybe this team of four are kind of onliners, right? The individual players may well not be, but um, this squad, like, can they do it right with it when the pressure's on in front of the fans and getting back into that kind of into that kind of groove? It's um, something that clearly they, they faltered pretty significantly this past weekend. And well, this is what Crimson has to say a few days ago. And so, well, this incredible image right here. Crimson honestly cannot be stopped this guy. But um, this is what he said, and this is what Deserto Intel tweet out when Serge took the 1 0 lead that after the grand finals lost before that Dallas Empire had to the Atlanta phase talking about look phase if you guys played your worst call of duty of all time in the well, you know, in, in very long time when they beat Dallas in that grand finals then well what does that mean about your actual potential LAN in the, especially in front of a crowd environment and maybe we saw Crim Six's um, kind of prophecy come to fruition this past weekend I learned anything about phase I'm not going to answer that question but yes I did yes I did how the f do you play the worst COD you played in months? I say that was the worst COD we played in a while, but we still came out the dub, so it's a right. But wait, we're on land for the first time. Coincidence? That shit was a reality check. So this is what is scary if you're Atlanta phase. They lost four series the entire year, and then these last four series that they have played, they've now lost three out of the last four. If this isn't a wake-up call again to playoffs, I do not know what is, says Maven. So really interesting. Look, you wouldn't put it past phase to absolutely come out swinging right here, but this is the thing. Like, phase maybe, it's not necessarily that they're getting in their own heads, but it feels like um, the pressure was certainly on them to keep performing. The pressure is on them now maybe more than ever to keep performing. And um, yes, look, a loss may uh, may invigorate them to some degree, but we thought that when they lost to Optic Chicago. Then they come into this past weekend. I mean, they do they demolish our New York Subliners online to finish out the regular season, and then they come into the major and lose two series. First thing to the Rocker, and the Rocker one is um, you know, looking back on the tournaments, is kind of acceptable, right? Minnesota were playing incredible Call of Duty, but it's the Seattle Surge one, and yes, they're playing good cause. The fact of the matter is, Seattle were bottom of the entire league, and um, you know, FaZe come in, and yes, the Seattle are you know, on landers or whatever, but uh, maybe it's somewhat the other way around for FaZe, right? And when the pressure is there, and whether it comes down to the wire, and we saw, for example, some of the hard points, right? And we go into a listening and the Atlanta phase guys they were getting frantic right they're making individual plays they're flying out they're not playing with their team like they would in it maybe if they were in the comfort of their own homes for example which um, definitely does create an interesting dynamic right LAN especially with the crowd and with all the pressure on is very different to online and whether phase can actually um well it can adjust to that situation right because RCs was brought in with the intention that in those situations they would not falter they would not fall short they would play their normal game that they do at home which obviously is the best game in the, in, in the entire world if they play at their potential but did not happen this past weekend which um just blows things wide open for the world championship right which is what is very exciting to to me as a call of duty fan as loony says like biggest upset of the year like no doubt this is the biggest upset of the year right the bottom team in the league beats the best team in the league expected to um you know win the championship again in like to knock them out top eight and then i mean like seattle what what a result that they had right here but it's got to be one of the biggest upsets we've ever seen in cod history to be honest just given how dominant the atlanta phase have been so far this season and the fact that seattle surge were actually in the bottom of the standings going into this one this is what asked had to say when FaZe lost to Minnesota in that winner's round one, no teamwork GG's, right? It just felt like they were making that individual plays and um, not playing together. And like, as soon as they started going down, they get in their own head and they're going, wow, like, why are we losing to these guys? And, you know, things start to go wrong for them. And um, last year's didn't seem like he could bring them back on the right track there. And Tim and Abizi both dropped like a 0.85, which is um, the first time we've seen that in a very long time, to be honest, in Call of Duty. And well, this is what happened after they lose to Seattle Surge. Just relived the same day as last year, like his brother, Pristini, gets the better of him yet again, as happened last season Florida versus Chicago Huntsman you guys might remember this is what Sim says disappointed everyone including ourselves this event got to go back to the drawing board for champs and get it together GG to Seattle lost last map so lots of room for improvement for phase right there going into the world championship like at the end of the day would you put it past them they're still an incredibly scary team they also have the buy in the winner's bracket right they will be starting from winners round two which means that they still have to win only three matches to win the entire thing they'll play the winner of Optic in New York and then if they do manage to win that they'll play either Dallas Empire Minnesota Rocker or Toronto 
Sports Ultra. Either one of those series um, very easily could go the other way. And if they do make the grand finals right, even if they do go through that bracket, as um, we may well still expect them to, they then have to, well, consider the whole loser's bracket um, advantage that we talked about earlier today from whatever team comes out of the lower side. of Stellium says, look, GG's to Seattle. Got to fix our mistakes again in the champs. Sorry for disappointing the fans. And um, it felt like, look, when these guys are on fire, they can't play some of the best Call of Duty ever. Usually when they lose a series, they come out the next couple of series absolutely swinging. We saw that at the end of the online stuff where they played the subliners and completely demolished them. They go to land, it's a very different story indeed. Which is exciting as a Call of Duty fan, no doubt, and raises serious questions about whether Atlanta Bays actually have what it takes in um, in this proper situation with when the pressure is seriously on to get the job done at a major tournament. These individual players have done it in the past, no doubt, but whether this combination of four players can do it does remain to be seen to some degree. So, remarkable situation we've had this past weekend. This, I thought, was also ridiculous, as Bryce says. Has Sim actually ever placed that low since he even went pro? I'm pretty sure that's his worst placement in his entire career, top eight, which is um, remarkable to think about. Also, I believe this was the first ever weekend where Sim actually went negative on a weekend. So, as you can see, like, um, you know, the, the last four tournaments of four matches they played, three out of four of them have been losses, and Sim this weekend had a point nine and a half points. He had a point eight six in search, a 1.0 in control. So, yes, Sim went negative this past weekend for the first time, I'm pretty sure, in his entire career, which, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, Scump still has the streak of, like, six years in a row of not going negative in an event, so Sim will not be breaking that one, it does seem, anytime soon. And, just, well, just because we were speaking about FaZe, I thought I'd mention this, right, because, of course, in the off-season, Major Maniac departed from that FaZe team, he went to the Minnesota Rocker, and um, this is what he said after he, well, he got benched right off the squad, and Accuracy, well, like, Accuracy came into the team, or Stanley came into the team initially, and then they swapped Accuracy out for Major Maniac in the end, and brought him back, and as he said, once again, another opportunity, no one will ever question my value again. Of course, he's talking to the Rocker guys here to some degree, but also maybe to FaZe in previous seasons, saying, okay, well, look, you decided to get rid of me off the team, and now I'm, you know, beating you like this. Certainly, I'm sure it feels pretty sweet for Major Mania. I can just wanted to mention this, the next mark points out to me right here. Last selfie in this home studio, says Lossie Van Prague, definitely indicating that, um, well, the casters, at the very least, will actually be at the World Championship, which, of course, is uh, something we all want to see. But who will win it? Will it be Atlanta FaZe? Very much intrigued to hear your thoughts on that in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. I've really got the YouTube I and you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive quality community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.